Sticks in the bucket. Will you please all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you. You may be seated. Okay, everybody, funky monkey. Ladies and gentlemen, while, every, while we get everything situated, do you mind if I have the drummers play a little bit for you? No, I don't think you heard me. Do you mind if the drummers play a little bit for us? Funky monkey. Drummers, ready position. I don't think they heard you in the back. Drummers, ready position. Here we go. For the uh, Bucket Drummers. Good morning, everyone. Come on, let's hear it for the Bucket Drummers. Welcome and good morning. My name is Andrew Cade. I'm Senior Vice President of the Urban League of Springfield, also President of the Springfield Cultural Council and radio personality of 90.7 WTCC-FM. We're so glad to be here this morning for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day Celebration 2023. <laughs> Our theme uh, this morning is Chasing the Dream, Arriving Together, Standing in the Light. And I'm just one of your MCs. I'm gonna pass it over to the next MC. Thank you so much, Andrew. Good, good morning, everyone. It's so nice to be back in person once again. We had to take a hiatus for, we all know why, for uh, a couple of years, but it is so wonderful to see everyone back together on a day when top of mind is unity 
and celebration of coming together and equity. So my name is Azel Kavan. I am honored to serve as MC, co-MC here today with these three other fantastic folks who are here with me at the podium. Uh, I serve as Chief Communications for Springfield Public Schools, and we are joined today by two fifth graders. Mm. We want to hear a loud, rousing round of applause for Malia Sky Matthews. Malia attends Springfield International Charter School. And Joshua Lopez. Nice round of applause. He attends Rebecca Johnson Elementary School. And both students spend their after school time at Martin Luther King Family Services. So they are going to play a great role in our, in our emceeing of the program here today. Did all of you have a chance to explore before you came in the wonderful art, art, artwork and the fantastic community providers that were here with us? Let's give them a round of applause. Unbelievable. Thank you to the artists and the community health providers who joined us here for the Art Expo before the program this morning. Uh, and the pre-show music provided by N3O featuring students of Springfield College and Sanito Musica Young Composers and Producers program. That is under the direction of Justin Asacion of the Community Music School and it includes original student compositions by students from Kennedy, STEM Academies and the High School of Commerce. So today we're here about music and celebration and Joshua is gonna tell us a little bit about the wonderful band that you heard as you all were filtering in our house band. So Joshua, why don't you tell us a little bit about who they are? With thanks to our MLK Day house band featuring Community Music School founding faculty member Billy Arnold Drums, Jimmy Daggs, bass, and Steve Donovan, piano. All right. Thank you, Joshua. All right. All right, Joshua. And you know, this program is actually one of the largest Martin Luther King celebrations in the Commonwealth. And though there are so many of us here in the audience today, we're joined by so many others who are watching live. And so Malia is now going to tell us how we have folks watching live this program today. Live streaming of today's Dr. King Day celebration was made possible by Focus Springfield. All right. All thank right. you, Malia. Right. And let's give a terrific round of applause for the Springfield Central High School ROTC. Thank you so much. All right, so that bucket drumming performance that we heard this morning, that was amazing. I know there's a lot of students who have parents and family members out in the audience, so let's take a minute to just give a wave, let everybody know where you are, say hello to your students. <laughs> and Joshua, why don't you tell us a little bit about the bucket drummers that we heard from earlier? Each year, Children across Springfield and Holyoke joined Community Music School of Springfield to be a part of, MLK, of the MLK Festival Bucket Drummers. Rick Marshall, director. This year's drummers are students from Sonido, Sonido Musica Academy, Dryden Element, oh shoot. All right. Public We're so happy uh, this morning to have the free and accepted Mason's jurisdiction of Massachusetts. They are here this morning under the leadership of the most worshipful Grand Master, the Honorable Right Worshipful Eve R. Magnum. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. It is truly an honor for the Grand Lodge membership to participate again in this annual ceremony honoring the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Massachusetts is the mother of all free and accepted Masons and the oldest black fraternal organization in the Western Hemisphere. Again, let's hear it for the Masons. For the 
And as we move along in the program, we'll ask our distinguished clergy to please begin to make your way to the stage. Are our clergy in the building for our unity prayer? Okay. As they make their way to the stage, there is a, a, a big group of people they have to make their way through. We're going to have our students introduce to you and let you know who our distinguished clergy are who are with us here today. Malia, do you want to start? Sure. First, the Reverend Michael Devine, pastor of St. Peter's Episcopal Church. Second, Reverend Dr. Atu White, pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church. And Pastor Maria Aponte of Casa de Paz and Restauración and Family Therapist at Family Restoration Counseling Services and Minister Isaiah Del Moro of Lifestream Ministries. If you would all now please stand for the prayer. O Lord God, we lift up to you this day the children of our city, which you hold so dear in your heart, as we do in our hearts as well. They are growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. There is so much that can mar your wonderful image in their hopeful faces. Protect them at each turn of their lives. Wrap your loving arms around them that they may not fall into temptation. Hold out your hand to lift them up when they fall and give them a vision of a world where your will is done. Let them see your hand at work in the world around them. Help them see in those who would guide them examples of courage, perseverance, and faith. Lead our children of today into the world you would establish so that they too may lead future generations into the beloved community of love. In the name of our Savior who gathered little children into his arms, amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of education. We thank you for our administrators, teachers, support staff janitors, bus drivers, and students. We pray for we resources and the willingness to properly compensate all of our educators. We pray for community centers and before and after school programming. We thank you for the ability to challenge and develop young minds into scholars and productive global citizens. We pray for our children. We pray that they may grow in wisdom and stature, that they might find favor with you and with humanity. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oramos, Señor, gracias. Lord, we thank you. Gracias por este día. Thank you for this day. Oramos por las ciudades. We pray for the cities. Y te pedimos, Dios, and we ask you, O oh Lord, que sea tu salud that it will be your health, que sea tu paz, your peace, y que sea tu prosperidad, and your prosperity, guiándonos en todo momento, guiding us every day. Te damos la gloria, we give you the glory, te damos el honor, all of the honor, y sabemos que los planes que tienes con cada ciudad serán cumplidos. And we know that your plan with every city shall be fulfilled. Entendemos Dios que es en la unidad. We understand, Lord, that it is in unity Donde tú te puedes glorificar, where you can glorify yourself y es tu luz la que guía nuestros pasos. and it is your light which is a lamp unto our feet. Gracias por permitirnos estar aquí reunidos. Thank you for allowing us to be here. La gloria es tuya. The glory is yours. En el nombre de Jesús. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be together as one people, as one community, Father. 
We believe, God, that Dr. King's dream is still alive in our churches, in our communities, and in our schools, Father. And we pray that we continue to stand up for what is right at all times. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you very much, clergy, for the unity prayer. Please remain standing for Lift Every Voice and Sing by the Community Chorale. This anthem by James Weldon Johnson, a school principal who wrote these words as a poem for the program celebrating the birthday of President Abraham Lincoln and Booker T. Washington as an honored guest. We welcome the Springfield Community Chorale and Vanessa Ford, who will lead us all in singing, joined by MLK Festival Orchestra, conducted by Marty Caribbean, students of Sanito Musica, MLK Family Services, and MLK Charter School of Excellence course and their director, Adrielis Sanchez. Let's give the community corral a round of applause. <laughs> Lift every voice and sing. We're all lifting our voice together this morning. Are we ready? Lift every voice. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the 
may be seated. Welcome, please everyone. turn your attention to I'm the Irene video McCaffrey, screen. I'm Executive Director of the Community Music School of Springfield and a proud presenting partner for the past 10 years in this wonderful community event. Our theme this year is Chasing the Dream, Arriving Together, and Standing in the Light. Over the course of the next two hours, we hope that you will feel the power and beauty of this community expression of Dr. King's legacy, guiding us in the work and celebrating the beauty of our beloved community. Chasing the Dream challenges us to recognize and embody what Dr. King called the inescapable network of mutuality. The idea that I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. Our young people, their families, and all of you here today are an expression of that mutuality. And what of the dream? What is possible when we stand together chasing Dr. King's dream? In his letter from a Birmingham jail, written on April 16, 1963, Dr. King wrote, let us all hope that the dark clouds of racial prejudice will soon pass away and the deep fog of misunderstanding will be lifted from our fear-drenched communities. And in some not too distant tomorrow, the radiant stars of love and brotherhood will shine over our great nation with all their scintillating beauty. We hope today's event will inspire you to continue chasing the dream, arriving together, and standing in the light. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right, thank you. We know that we have a sea of parents and guardians and grandparents in the audience. But I know we also have a lot of educators, so let's just give a shout out to all of our educators who are in the building today. I've seen a lot of the students going, oh, I see my teacher, I see my counselor. So if our next speaker can be begin making her way up to the podium, I have the pleasure of introducing, she's already here, she's on it. Waleska Lugo de Hasu. she is going to give us a presentation to set the stage and just emphasize standing in the light and give us a little information on how we came to be here today. She is a nationally certified diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging consultant and CEO of Inclusive Strategies. She sits on many local and statewide boards, including the Community Music School, where she serves as the vice president of the board. She has been a partner of the MLK celebration for six years. Please welcome my friend and colleague, Waleska Lugo de Jesus. Our theme for the 2023 MLK Day celebration is chasing the dream, arriving together and standing in the light. If Reverend Dr. King had not sacrificed his life for our rights, he could very much still be alive today and would have celebrated his 94th birthday yesterday. Dr. Emmett K grew up in, ch in a church with his father and grandfather, and they used language and music to educate minds. He became a public speaker at the age of 14. He skipped 9 and 12th grade and entered Morehouse College at the age of 15. By 18, he knew he wanted to be a minister and used the principles and methods of social reform to help lead the civil rights movement. Dr. King was an extraordinary gifted student, which is why today he would be so proud to see this room filled with Generation Z, including my son Lorenzo that's somewhere out there, and so many youth. Yesterday, also marked the first year anniversary of Ron Johnson's returning home to God. Ron was the founder of MLK Day Celebration and president of the MLK Family Center and a dear friend. Today we honor Ron for his persistence in a 21st century version of social reform and for his impact and love for his beloved community. He resisted what was wrong and insisted on access and equity. 
Standing in the light takes vision, it takes courage, it takes inner power, it takes strength, and it takes sacrifice. I'm wearing my Kentesto to remind me of the importance of understanding and investigating our past and bringing forth that which is useful in the present. Our journeys may become a survivor guide for others, and we heal through connectedness. Let's break down barriers, push through bias, and interrupt systemic mistreatment. Awaken your conscious. History builds empathy through studying the lives and struggles of others. Studying the diversity of human experience helps us appreciate cultures, norms, ideas, traditions that are not our own. And to recognize them as a meaningful product of specific times and places. In my recorded remarks, I reminded us that while Dr. King inspires equity, he also did not ignore the existence of hate. It is urgently true that we cannot keep waiting do not forget the different genocides, genocide of African American turned into slaves, genocide of indigenous people, genocide of Jewish people, and so many more genocides take place because individuals, groups, and nations make decisions to act or not. Genocides raise difficult questions about human behavior and the context which individual decisions are made. Do not choose to ignore them. Racially and segregated communities continue to exist. Not everyone is free to live where they want, eat their culturally relevant foods, shop freely without being followed, play in safe parks, get a quality education to work a decent job that pays well, and just to walk anywhere we want and be our authentic selves in an equal way. We must act boldly. We still have work to do. Ongoing armed conflicts in the world continue to affect us all of us. To stand in the light is to love with understanding, is to love with goodwill, seeking nothing in return. We must strive for equity, and equity must be supported by strategic action. Hate is a pointless emotion to have inside you. Hate leads to racism, and racism is not useful. Fear of anything that is different than you is not useful. Anti-Semitism is not useful. Privilege is not useful. Misuse of power is not useful. Oppression to our LGBTQIA plus community, to people with disabilities or women, is not useful. Chasing the dream for Ron meant not being silent. In Dr. King's words, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. For Ron, creating awareness, educating on MLK's dream, engaging multiple generations, also meant collaborating with partners and it meant spreading love. We celebrate you today, Ron. Thank you to the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Family Services Board and President Aisha Jackson, staff, MLK event planning team, co-presenting sp partners, sponsors, Mayor Sarno, who will acknowledge our elected officials, our faith leaders, and you, the children of our future. Today is special. As we continue to grow this year, we have our sister city, Holyoke, represented. I know that growth would make Ron proud today. I want to take a moment and honor him by shining a special light on the legacy he began and give some insight about how a humanitarian leader can help by lifting others. In Ron's case, a whole beloved community. A pivotal moment and the reason why I've been involved in the MLK celebration for seven years is because of a conversation I had with Ron when he said, I must do more. I thanked him for all he does, and he said, no, it's not enough. He felt a responsibility to create scalable social change. Today on his anniversary, I wanna lift MLK Dreamers with Ron as MLK Family Center Board, Pat, Lenise, Donna, staff, collaborating with neighbors and organization coordinating youth, Dr. Calvin Hill for being so community focused, Vanessa Ford, who is a key player in all things MLK Day in the Ensemble Connections and always so full of grace. Aileen McCaffrey and the Community Music School of Springfield teachers, singers, infusing art and culture. Dream Studios, Ben Smith and his imagination of dance and movement. Springfield Public Schools for organizing with the children and their families. Focus Springfield team and the entertainment visuals. The voice of the MCs, Andrew Cade, Yvette Frisbee and our students holding us together, Cultural Council Karen Finn, and all our yearly sponsors. Through, through financial struggles for programming and services, hurdles during the pandemic, and managing a divisive world, Ron brought us together 
and his intentions created an inclusive reality for our community. Ron was born to dream, and that he did. He never gave up. And just like Dr. MLK got the language right when he reminded us that we are all capable and beautiful, we want our children to know that whatever they, wherever they come from, however they look, whichever language they speak, they are loved and they are light. This remembrance gives us a sense of shared humanity, inspiration, and hope for the future. What if this year we focus on making an equilibrium, a balance both socially and at home to invite peace and equity? Look at your conscience and your heart. I invite you to keep lifting today's theme of chasing the dream, arriving together, and remember, each person carries a story. Give them light, discover it while standing together. We are moving into a bright day, standing in the light. I echo and embrace Dr. King's words. We must meet hate with love. We must meet physical force with soul force. We must follow nonviolence and love. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Walaska Lugo De Jesus, standing in the light of every special presentation this morning. Thank you so very much. We would like to acknowledge the ushers today from St. John's Congregational Church and the greeters from Zeta Phi Beta Sorority. Let's give them a round of applause. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, the Community Music School's Sonido Musica String and Dance Pro Band Program. Performing Odd Times by Springfield's Rick Marshall. Sonido is a weekly in-school partnership across over 30 Springfield and Holyoke schools. Sonido Music uh, Partnership is directed by Eleni Yalanis and is supported by the Mass Cultural Council STARS grant and has won a number of prestigious awards, including National Endowment for the Arts, Sonido Musica invites elementary, middle, and high school students in the Springfield and Holyoke Public Schools to select violin, cello, or band instruments and receive weekly group instruction during the school day in support of their school music program. This year, over 1,000 students will participate in Sonido Musica. For many of the children today, this is their first, their first public presentation of their newly acquired musical skills. They will be accompanied by the ML Festival Orchestra and the, under the direction of Marty Carivium. All right, let's give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time ever. Time is ticking quick, no 
it's not the violent type, just check up on your friend. Anything, go and make a list. Petty beef on anything, go and make a list. And then, uh, <laughs> rest in peace, I'm okay. Rest in peace. I'm okay. Let's give him a round of applause. Hello, everyone. Our theme this year is Chasing the Dream, arriving together and standing in the light. Speaking today as the Vice President of Inclusion and Community Engagement at Springfield College, I focus much of my time on issues of equity and belonging. Therefore, for me, the notion of arriving together is near and dear to me both personally and professionally. The last few years, I've seen our country grapple with a global pandemic, governmental incivility, and racial unrest. There were times when we saw the worst and the best of each other, and perhaps like some of you, I question our ability to move forward. I ask myself on more than one occasion, how can we arrive together when we seem so divided? Today, as we look across the city, state, and country, it's important for us to understand that our diversity is our greatest strength. Don't be fooled by those that will tell you otherwise. Dr. King shared with us in the 1963 release of his third book, Why We Can't Wait, that human beings, with all of our faults and strengths, constitute the mechanisms of a social movement. He further shared that we must make mistakes and learn from them, make more mistakes and learn anew. We must taste defeat as well as success and discover how we live with each other. Time and action are the teachers. Today, I question, have we not learned enough? We continue to chase his dream, but it is my belief that until we learn from our mistakes, and garner the strengths of a social movement as he encouraged us to do in 1963, we will not collectively arrive together, nor will we stand in the light. Dr. King also famously stated that we must learn to live together as brothers or perish as fools. On this day, as we gather in remembrance of Dr. King, let me share with you some good news. In his 1968 mountaintop speech, he told us that we as a people will get to the promised land. On this day, let us rejoice together, let us embrace our shared humanity, and let us put away our differences so that we may all arrive together and stand in the light of his promised land. band. Let's all 
also give one huge round of applause for the organizers of this program. You can imagine all the work that goes into planning the transitions, getting the students to rehearsals. Let's give them a rousing, rousing round of applause. And I can tell you they are a wonderful, beautiful bunch of people to work with. So at this time, we're moving on in our program to greetings and reflections. And I have the honor of introducing the mayor of the city of Springfield who will bring us through that portion of the program. Many of you know him as the people's mayor. In education circles, we call him the education mayor. He is actually the longest serving mayor of the city of Springfield. Please welcome the Honorable Mayor Dominic J. Sarno. Thank you, Azell. Azell was my first press secretary in my office about 15, 16 years ago. And of course, that booming voice of Andrew Cade. And how about our youth MCs? Are they doing a great job or what? Matter of fact, I love that sports coat you have on there, too. Don't leave that lying around there. I might grab that. I'm joined by my friends and colleagues who will be speaking uh, shortly, uh, representing the state legislature is my friend and colleague, State Representative Bud Williams. Friend and colleague on the City Council, City Council President Jesse Letterman. My friend and colleague on the School Committee, newly minted Vice Chairwoman Latonia Naylor. I want to give a special shout out to a visiting mayor from the great city. Uh, the paper city of Holyoke. His son was singing today, Mayor Josh, Joshua Garcia. Josh. I also want to give a special shout out. Really a local, regional, and through the country recognized as a civil rights icon in his own right. My dear, dear friend, retired state representative Ben Swan. Ben, where are you, Ben? One last shout out I'd like to give, and we're going to give a rounding applause so they can hear up in heaven, is to my dear friend, Ron Johnson. I know his lovely wife, Donna, is here. It was a year ago yesterday that Ron passed away. Ron would always come to me with why not, Don? Why not, Mayor? Let's try this. Let's do this. And when he put this beautiful mosaic of the greater Springfield area together. So, Ron, we're thinking of you. The last time we were here, Ron was with us. So, Ron, we continue to do this not only for Dr. Martin Luther King. We continue to do this for you. I want to thank the uh, lead sponsors, uh, again, of this, the... Uh, Community Music School of Springfield. Eileen McCafferty has just done such a wonderful job. She has incorporated uh, all of the city of Springfield. Let's give them a big round of applause. The kids did a great job. How about those kids with the drums? It reminded me of my old South End Community Center, Rick Marshall. We used to get the, uh, the five-gallon empty buckets from Cakely Hardware, and Mr. Falsetti used to give us the sticks so the kids could play. They did a great, great job. To Patricia Bernard and the Martin Luther King Family uh, Services, we appreciate their leadership. <laughs> Springfield College, I know Dr. Calvin Hill is here, to President Mary Beth Cooper. Uh, you have to remember, many, many years ago, in the 60s, Dr. King was invited to speak at Springfield College under threats and under harassment from the FBI, but Springfield accepted and welcomed warmly Dr. King to the Springfield College. Thank you for your continued sponsorship. 
And of course, Springfield Public School System, to our students, to our teachers, to our administrators, to our entertainment, let's give them a big round of applause. To their parents, thank you for your continued belief and investment in our city of Springfield. This is all about partnership. And when I think of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, the Fair Housing Act of 1968, Dr. King, the lead, did not do this alone. He had a valued partner with him. That was his wife, Coretta Scott King, who through the trials, tribulations, and triumphs stood side by side. That is sometimes a difficult thing to do when you're leading when many do not believe. And Dr. King would speak of that he might not be around to see the change. And unfortunately, he was not around to see the change as he was tragically assassinated back in 1968. Dr. King would always put across the equalizer. Empowerment was education. That was the door opener. Equity and equality for economy and jobs. But as we come to celebrate with what I believe is the biggest MLK celebration in Western Massachusetts, and you see the beautiful mosaic that is here from near and far, Dr. King would leave us with this that is extremely important. As foot soldiers that we have to be, continue to be, to aspire and champion the ideals of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King for the betterment of all in our community. To each and every one of you, thank you for being here. Good health to each and every one of you and continued success. God bless. With that, put your hands together for my friend and colleague from the state legislature, State Representative Buddy Williams. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first, in honor to God, Reverend Clergy, I think the mayor did an excellent job. Protocol has been set. But I do want to uh, re-acknowledge uh, that man down at the end of that first row, uh, former state Representative Ben Swan, who met with Dr. King and talked with Dr. King. And Ben is regarded as a father of civil rights in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And did the, uh, the, the let me finish, let me finish, whoa, let me finish. The Pettis, Pettis Bridge, we have a living history here. So young people, you get a chance uh, on the way out and you want to talk to him, he give you some real insight. My dear friend, this city has stood on your shoulders, and black people especially, and brown people. Thank you, Representative Benjamin Swan. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, first, uh, my colleague, uh, Chairman of Public Safety, the great Carlos Gonzalez, and he reminds me we're in, we're in his district. This is his district, Carlos Representative. Thank you, Gonzalez. Former House member, uh, been elevated to the Mass Senate, my dear friend, Jake Oliveras. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> this, this is a great day. And uh, as I look out in, in, in talking to Ron, this is one of the greatest celebrations of ML Day celebration in the country. And why is that? Because you have young people. You know, Sunday in America is one of the most segregated days of the week. Sunday, all black people go to church here, whites go to church here, brown people go to church here. But bringing the youth in, and Dr. King always had a message for the youth. And as we talk, I'm glad you asked that. 242 years 
black people are freed from slavery. 1863, Emancipation Proclamation. But what happened? They're free, no resources, no land, no property, no money. So what happens? We drift and drift and drift. No language, everything is, your culture is taken away, your religion is taken away. Study your history. As Zuska, uh, you did say, Dr. King picked up the mantle and he looked at uh, the racism in this country. Don't let Dr. King fool you. Every time he gave a sermon and he preached and he talked about the rights and wrong in this country and how do we elevate people, dream or nightmare, depending on how you look at it. Dr. King would be kind of happy with elected a black president two times. A black woman is now in the U.S. Supreme Court. We have a vice president who's black. We have the head of the Democratic Party in Washington is an African-American man. He'd be very happy with that. But as he looked around and he thought about it, when you see so much suffering and pain and hunger and food lines and racial discrimination, and then he had the message for the young people, never give up. You are somebody. Don't let anyone tell you you can't be what you want to be. Because if he ever believed that, he never would have kept on pushing. And he pushed and pushed and pushed. You are somebody. You're beautiful. You're intelligent. And you can be whatever you want to be. Parents, you got to believe it. You got to instill it in them. Because I'm sick and tired of sick and tired of doing it every year, year in and year out. You know, uh, it's been said, one in three black people are going to jail. One in seven Hispanics are going to jail. One in 20 some whites are going to jail. Jails are being built. Who are they being built for? I would hate to say, I hope not for this crowd, but this is real, it's a real reality that we have to deal with. So we have to get in the heads of our kids Make them understand that they can be what they want to be. They have to. This is very, very important. And I'm going to close with this. Dr. King had a saying. He said, if you can't fly, you run. If you can't run, you walk. And if you can't walk, you crawl. But baby, get moving. But well, let's get moving. Put your hands together for our friend and colleague, our city council president, Jesse Letterman. Thank you, Mayor Sarno, and good morning. It is a great honor to be here on what I really believe is one of the most joyful days in the city of Springfield every year on behalf of my friends and colleagues on the Springfield City Council. My name is Jesse Letterman. I'm honored to serve as the leader of the City Council, and we have uh, members of the City Council here. I'd like to acknowledge my colleague, City Councilor Justin Hurst. My colleague, City Councilor Tracy Whitfield. And my colleague, Ward 7 City Councilor Tim Allen. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had our organizational meeting at the City Council, and during my remarks at that, I reflected on the fact that we're honored to serve on one of the most diverse city councils in the history of the city of Springfield. And our work is made better by the fact that we represent different backgrounds, different perspectives, and different experiences. That's true for all of the city of Springfield. And we do our best work when we come together, bringing all of that different experience, those different backgrounds, to the table in good faith to work on behalf of our community. This is a fitting tribute to an extraordinary man. And I want to say to all of the young people here, as you reflect and learn about the history of Dr. King, about the history of the people that he drew inspiration from, his friends, his family, his community, individuals from the city of Springfield, as you've heard, who stood with Dr. King and stood here in our community for justice, 
I bet that can feel a little overwhelming. As a young person, I know it did for me. But remember that that extraordinary nature of Dr. King lives inside all of you as well. And we know as we hear your expressions today in support of that legacy, that you are going to carry on that legacy. As you've heard from my colleagues to the young people here today, you can do anything that you set your mind to. And while I stand before you as the president of the city council, I also stand before you as the youngest member of the city council and one of the youngest individuals elected in the city of Springfield to say that you too can lead, will lead, and we will be there to support you as you move forward in that leadership. Thank you so, so much. Please welcome my friend and colleague from the school committee, newly minted vice chairwoman of the school committee, Latonia Monroe Naylor. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I said good afternoon, everyone. That's what I like, some energy in the room, amen. Y'all know I'm a preacher saying amen after that. But I definitely want to give honor to God who is the head of my life and to all the clergy in the room and especially my husband, Pastor Madi Naylor. I know he's in here somewhere. The love of my life, the father of my four beautiful children. And I want to acknowledge my son who is the youth speaker on tonight, Madi Naylor Jr. As I am here representing the school committee, I would also like to acknowledge my colleague in government and also a friend representing wards one and three on the school committee, Josiah Gonzalez. I'm going to be very brief, but I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that many times we talk about Dr. King and we always go to the I have a dream speech. It is very rare that we talk about the mountaintop speech, which is one of the greatest and most travailing sermons that he preached and that he spoke of, which also happened the night before he was assassinated. And although his guide did not take him to Mount Everest, King saw the mountaintop as a place to witness the greatness of human capacity. He had been through valleys and storms, but his guide led him along the way. God was with him from the mountaintop he showed him the promised land. We go through many valleys, through many heights, through many mountains, but at the end of the day, there is a place for us to arrive to. If we can all come together as a people, I, I often say to folks, it takes a village. It still takes a village. And when our young people, I want you to stand up, young people. Stand up, young people. All you young people in the room, I want you to look to the left. And I want you to look to the right. This is your village. Right, parents? Right, community leaders? Right, educators? Right, clergy? You may be seated, young people. We want you to know that Dr. Dream's speeches did not go with him to the grave. But they are still yet resounding messages of empowerment, of spiritual enlightenment, of growth, and the fact that we can all get there together. So I invite you to keep focus, listen to his different speeches, not just on Martin Luther King Day, but listen to the words because I tell you one thing, there's a scripture that says there's nothing new under the sun. The things that King faced are the things that we very much face today, just in a different way, in a different coat, in a different atmosphere, but we know that we still struggle. Our people are still struggling and that we can still get to that next place together. Not alone, but what? Right, pray my strength in the Lord, and y'all have a good rest of this time. I know I will not continue to stand before y'all and these beautiful young people that are about to continue to bless our souls. All right. Let's have a round of applause for our dignitaries, Mayor Sano, State Representative Williams, City Councilor Jesse Letterman, and of course, School Committee Person Latanya Monroe Naylor. How about all of our elected officials, please? Stand, please. All of our elected officials, please stand and take a bow. All right, let's give them a round of applause. The free and accepted Masons, uh, all of the Masons, please stand. All of the Masons, please stand, take a bow. Thank you very much. 
Ladies and gentlemen, up next, the Springfield Community Chorale under the direction of Springfield native and community treasurer, Vanessa Ford. This multi-generational chorale is composed of ministry and community members, family and friends from across Western Mass and Connecticut. Vanessa Ford, renowned vocalist and voice faculty at the Community Music School of Springfield and program director of Trust Transfer Project is so proud to bring together these amazing voices in unity to share their original piece written for this day, featuring Sean Giles as lead vocalist, accompanied by Christopher Bayman and Aaron Bayman Jr. May you find strength and encouragement as we move forward in Hope Together, presenting Born to Dream. To hope again, to move forward and believe in who I am. Now is the time to breathe again, drawing near again, standing in the light. It's time to live again and cast out all my fears. My faith is strong and now I'm ready. I am here. I was born to dream. And now I can see my dreams again. I was born to dream. Oh, I feel my heart beating free again. Cause a dream deferred is not a dream denied i found my hope to dream again
goodness. The community, Springfield Community Corral. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard Born to Dream for the first time. That's right. Do you think we can take them on the road? This should be a number one song, right? We're going to make that a number one song. Written by Vanessa Ford. Thank you so very much, Vanessa. And the Springfield Community Chorale. We are all chasing the dream. Our beloved communities today remember the legacy of our civil rights leader, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. His courage, his faith, his hope, and his love. While Dr. King inspires equity, he also does not ignore the existence of hate. I invite you to extend the conversation of how to come together as a community. Do not turn a blind eye to hate, racism, anti-Semitism, and the oppression that still exists systemically. To arrive together and harmonize, we need to understand our own behaviors first. We should be honest and recognize how we use our honored advantages and privilege to interact with each other and the world. When we understand, it allows us to uplift the legacy we want for the future and stand in the light. My name is Waleta Lugo de Jesu, and I'm the CEO of Inclusive Strategies. I identify as afro puerto Riqueña because I acknowledge my history of African descent and Tainos. Our stories make us, and my journey is rooted in struggle. I see myself routinely arriving at spaces where people are judged by stereotypes and many times endure microaggressions. I partner with this event every year because I want to help my community build empathy, recognize and remove barriers so we can all achieve prosperity. That is what this year's theme inspires, light. Every year, the MLK Day Collaborative team dream of inspirational ways to bring thousands of children and people from Springfield and Holyoke to inspire us with music, performances, spoken word, art, and the spirit of unity, much inspiration. Honoring Reverend Dr. MLK's vision, the visual is multi-generational and the feeling is one of peace. Embracing Dr. King's words, darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Today we continue to celebrate and integrate Dr. MLK's dream. We integrate by arriving to a level of understanding together, and today we inspire, we build up, we transform, and we love. Love those that don't understand us and love those that uplift us. Today, tomorrow, and every day, we stand in the light together. Chasing the dream, arriving together, and standing in the light. What a wonderful day, and I cannot help but to ask for another round of, a round of applause for that amazing performance. Did they belt it out or what with heart and soul? Terrific, the amount of talent and skill that exists in our students with the right leadership and tutelage stands before you today. And we are going to move right along in our program. You know, Andrew, we're, it's almost 60 years since Dr. King gave his famous years. address. I think uh, Dr. King would have been uh, 94 years 94, old. 94, is that right? My wow, goodness. yes, yes. And his legacy continues. Continues on, continues. absolutely. And Dr. King was known for so many things, especially his oratorical skills. And so we could not have a program honoring his legacy without that portion included. And so now we're going to move on to our portion of the oratory part of the program. And we have a student speaker with us here today who placed in the top three of the 2022 Edward W. Brooks III Oratorical Contest. His name is Nadi Naylor Jr. And he's a freshman at Putnam Vocational Technical Academy. Give him an applause as he comes to the stage. Nadi, let me... Let me continue to tell them a little bit about you, okay? You met his mother a little bit ago, and she and her husband are raising a, a young man who's a student and an athlete, 
He plays soccer and football and basketball and baseball. Before he got to high school, he served as the student council president in middle school and also as a student ambassador. And in grade three, he was accepted to a scholarship program. All right, let's give it up. Let's give it up for that. The future is bright for this young man. His future goals include joining the US Air Force and becoming a pilot. And please give him a warm welcome as he recites his winning piece from the 2022 Edward W. Brooke III Oratorical Contest. Nadi? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Madi Nella Jr., as you heard. And today, I will be talking to you about chasing your dream, arriving here and standing in the light. But first, I would like to give honor to God, my bishop and overseer, my mother and father, who are also my youth pastor and evangelist, to all the clergy, elected officials, community leaders, and all who honor is due. Chase, arrive, stand. These are the three words that I want you to keep in mind for whenever you have a dream. Chase, arrive, stand. Now I would like you to repeat these three words after me. Chase, arrive, stand. Chase, arrive, stand. One more time. Chase, arrive, stand. Chase, arrive, stand. All right. To chase your dream, to chase the dream that you have, what do you do? You try to get to it. You try to reach for where that dream is and where that dream takes place. You try to reach that goal. You extend yourself you, and extend your arms to reach that goal. So what is a dream? A dream is a cherished desire, aspiration, ambition, or ideal. So what is your dream? So can we all take a moment to dream? I won't ask you to close your eyes. I want you to try to keep your eyes open and dream while you are awake and aware, just like how Dr. Martin Luther King did. And now, however you are comfortable dreaming, I would like everyone to picture that dream. Picture this. Where is that dream? How are you going to get there? By what means are you willing to reach that goal, to, to reach that dream? Is it just a dream, or are you going to make that dream a reality? I want everyone to look to your left and and right and realize that not only you, but all these people that are next to you and around you also have a dream. You might not all have the same dream or the same goals and aspirations, but just like Dr. King, you have a dream. And be glad that you have a dream, because if you don't have a dream, then there's no way that you can make one come true. That's a quote from Steven Tyler, and it is saying that without a dream, and without a goal to become what you aspire to be, then there is no way for you to get to that point. Just like saying that you can't open a box that isn't there. You must dream and have a goal if you want to get to that dream and complete that goal. If you want to open a business, if you want to protect your family, if you want to be valedictorian of your school or get a promotion in the workplace, then you have to dream about it first. You have to think about it and set that place as a point that you want to get to, just like Dr. King did. In his dream, he saw us being able to own our businesses, get promotions, and have the opportunity to become valedictorian in our racially diverse schools. He dreamt it, he visualized it, and he turned that motion picture in his mind into a reality. By Google definition, a dream is a series of thoughts, images, and sensations occurring in one sleep. But we need to wake up and take action. And just like Dr. King, you have to think about how you are going to get there and think about the road it will take to get there. You must pursue and push on that road and keep going until you reach that dream. And then you have to continue persevering to let that, to to let that dream persist as reality. I want this to sink in, so please repeat after, after me. I will dream. I will chase that dream. 
and I will stand in the light of my dream. And the three words from before, chase, arrive, stand. Chase, arrive, stand. Thank you. The hope, oh, sorry. The hope of a secure and livable world lies with disciplined nonconformists who are dedicated to justice, peace, and brotherhood. A quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. himself shows that the hope and the dream to get secure and livable world, or in other words, a safe world, is something that is decided and held up with the disciplined nonconformist, which means that so, which means someone who doesn't just change themselves and adapt to the social standards and adapt to what people of society might think of their actions, and will go through means other than the generally accepted, other than the generally accepted thoughts of actions or thoughts of what to do. We need someone who isn't afraid to be out of the boundaries and, and of what is customary and is still disciplined enough to stay dedicated and stay focused on justice, peace, and brotherhood. And yes, that includes all of you females too. We are able to have a safe and securable world when we acquire the dedication for things that make up that livable world. When we acquire the things that piece together that safe, that safe world and environment for our people. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stated that our lives begin to end the day that we become silent about the things that matter. The day that we give up on that dream and the day that we give up on what matters to us, that will be the day that we are done fighting for our lives. That will be the day that we stop living our lives. That will that will be the day that you give up on actually living your life and you are just existing. A man without a cause is just a robot walking around this this world, a quote from yours truly. But that day, but that day, you will give up, you will, that day that you give up, you are like a phone without a charger just waiting till zero percent. You need to continue to fight for that cause, fight for that dream, fight to get to that point and further. You need to find your way to that point and plant your feet, fighting to stay at that point. Because when you get there, there will be others trying to take your place. You have to hold your ground and stand in the light. You need to be in the spotlight. Plant yourself in the focus, in the light, and in the light so you can be seen. You are there and recognized for that goal that you have been wanting. You have arrived to the point that you, are, that you have dreamt of. And you are now out of the darkness and standing in the light. You made that dream that you have been chasing into reality. But still, you are not done. You have a dream. And, reach that, and you reach that dream. You aren't going to just stop. You are going to keep reaching for the next step to get higher and higher, pushing out, breaking through all the limitations, and pushing through from the pressure. You went through all of that pressure, and now you are here standing in the light. And now you are shining lights on others. Do you know why? Because throughout all struggles, through, through all the pressure, a piece of coal that cancels out light and is just like everything else is changed and evolved. And that coal turns into a shining diamond that shines everywhere it goes. I thank you for your time and pray that you all have the mindset to chase beyond your dream and stand in the light and spread the light. Pray my strength on the Lord. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nadi. And, and I think, I don't think that is a, a, a recitation of something previous. That was written for this day and this occasion just for you. And it was very inspirational and it was very high lifting. And I thank you, Nadi, for the quote that we heard first from you on this stage today. A man without a cause is just a robot walking around. All right. Standing in the light. As Azel indicated earlier, there are so many moving parts today and pieces uh, in the front of the house, in the back of the house. We could not do that without the volunteers. So we would like to thank our volunteers today, the ushers and greeters from St. John's Congregational Church, the Dow Self AmeriCorps Literacy Lab, Springfield College AmeriCorps, United Way of Pioneer Valley, and MGM. Let's give them all a round of applause. Thank you so very much for all of our volunteers uh, today. 
Up next, ladies and gentlemen, the MLK Festival Orchestra. String City Orchestra is an advanced chamber orchestra at Community Music School under the direction of Marty Carrerium and is proud to represent the MLK Day Festival Orchestra for the eighth year. Joining the Festival Orchestra today are students of Community Music School as well as dedicated group of M. CMSS alumni and friends from Springfield Symphony and Youth Orchestra, Hartford Symphony, and Amherst Smith and Mount Holyoke Colleges. They will be performing a beautiful piece called Water in the Moonlight by Thomas Blind Tom Wiggins. Let's give a round of applause for the MLK Festival Orchestra. The MLK Orchestra. Let's give them a round of applause. The MLK Festival Orchestra.
round of applause to the house band. They're doing such a phenomenal job today. Absolutely. Good job. Is the Sonida Musica, which is a partnership between the Community Music School and Springfield Public Schools. It is under the direction of Eleni Yelanis and features a student soloist, Chestina Thrower. And also the bridge, Christina is also the bridge leader. Now, this performance is comprised of students from so many schools. Malia and I are gonna try to work together and tell you who you have before you. So, Malia, let's get started. With students from, oh, you're good. With students from Bolin Elementary, Dryden Elementary, Donna. Donahue School, Karena Community School, Duggan Academy, STEM Academy Springfield, John F. Ken Kennedy Academy, Kylie Academy, Holyoke High School, LT Cl Claire, Claire P. Sullivan School, Metcalf Dual Language School, Mc McMahon School, E. Wait, E. N. White School, Commerce High School. Springfield Honors, uh, Springfield Honors Academy, SciTech, Chestnut Tag, STEM Academy Springfield, Baird Middle School, White, White Saint School, and Mary Link Elementary. Yes, and they are joined by students of the MLK Family Services, MLK Charter School of Excellence, and youth from parent villages. Give it up for Sonido Musica. I've been watching. 
weight on my shoulders A bullet in my gun Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head Just in case I have to run I do what I can, what I can, when I can for my people as the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night, that's when I'm gonna stand up. Let's hear it for Chestina and Sonita Musica. More of a call to action than a song. That was fantastic. Stand up from the movie Harriet. Thank you so much for that performance.
As the students make their way off the stage, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize the others who make this possible. Julie Jaron, the Director of Visual and Performing Arts for Springfield Public Schools. Round of applause for Julie. And Cassie Stewart, Director of Arts for Holyoke Public Schools. Round of applause for Cassie. This program would not be possible without their support and leadership. All right, what an amazing performance. Thank you so very much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the charge of the day, Dr. Calvin Hill, Springfield College Vice President for Inclusion and Community Engagement. Dr. Hill's responsibilities include promoting diversity and inclusion among all constituents of the college and connecting and promoting the college's resources to area communities. Dr. Hill is a consultant on diversity issues and presents nationally on issues of inclusion, where he focuses primarily on providing equal access to educational opportunities for underrepresented populations. Ladies and gentlemen, our charge of the day, Dr. Calvin Hill. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Andrew, for that overgenerous introduction. So everyone, I hope you all enjoyed witnessing the spirit, talent, and joy of our young people today. Can we just give them another round of applause? You know, a little over five decades ago, Dr. King physically left us. But standing here today and hearing and seeing this diverse group of young people gathered to celebrate his birth gives me chills. It gives me chills because I can feel his spirit living inside each and every one of you. So thank you so much for being here. Now to the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and our guardians who played a part in ensuring that these young people are here today, thank you. Thank you for understanding and instilling to them that today is a day on and not a day off. Further, and this is something that I want you young people to understand, we don't know who or what these young people will do. I can't imagine that Dr. King's parents, as they were setting and playing in the living room, ever thought that he would have the impact around the world that he did. So young people, we don't know where you're going, but I want to make sure that we understand that we're instilling with you greatness. So thank you. Now before I conclude my charge for the day, let me ask that uh, if you were here and you served on the uh, MLK Day Planning Committee, that if you were able, could you stand so that we could recognize you? If you were here and you served on the MLK Day Planning Committee, if you could stand, that would be great. Thank you. And to our MCs, Azelle and Andrew, and our junior MCs, Amelia and Joshua, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing our, your talents with us today and to making sure that our program would run smoothly. Now, Eileen, Patricia, and Vanessa, if you could join me here on stage. When we last gathered together in person in January of 2020, my friend, fraternity brother, and our drum major shared the following with us. In every era, God has chosen men and women to serve the needs of his people. Such was the service of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose birth we are here to celebrate today. We are deeply thankful for the life of this 20th century prophet. May the words and spirit of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. rekindle our faith, and may the deep love that Dr. King had for all people be released in us so that we too might work miracles in the lives of those who continue to hate. Dr. King taught us that only love can overcome hatred, bitterness, and fear. 
May his struggle for social transformation continue in this generation. And may all people come to believe that with perseverance, we shall overcome. Thank you, Ron, for those words. And we know that you are here with us today. As Mayor Sarnow shared with us earlier in 1964, Dr. King was here in Springfield. He was not too far from where we are gathered here today. He was here to deliver the commencement address at Springfield College. In that address, he spoke from the theme of a rain, remaining awake through a great revolution. And he, he used as his subject the story of Rip Van Winkle, who slept for over 20 years, sleeping through and subsequently knowing nothing about a revolution that changed the world as he knew it. Today, we are in the midst of our own social and ethical revolution that is changing the world. Don't be like Rip Van Winkle and sleep through it. Speaking to those graduating seniors, Dr. Sheen shared that he believed that there is nothing more tragic than the condition of sleeping through a revolution, a revolution that is bringing about structural change. He went on to share with those graduates that the greatest challenge facing each and every one of us is the challenge of remaining awake through this revolution. Many of us today need to wake up, or as the young people would say, get woke. Marion Webster defines woke as being aware and actively attentive to the important facts and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. Are we woke? As we depart here today, and as we think about the challenges facing this revolution, racism, poverty, food insecurity, homophobia, nationalism, just to name a few, I ask that you remain aware of our theme that we use today, chasing the dream, arriving together, and standing in the light, and that you ask yourselves, what will future generations say about us? Did we, like Rip Van Winkle, sleep through this revolution? Or did we take the social activism to create change? On this day, let us have faith that with perseverance, activism, and yes, some level of wokeness, we too shall overcome. Dr. King's life, his work, and yes, even his death is our call to action. May his spirit guide us and live within each and every one of us as we strive to make Springfield, Massachusetts, the United States, and the world a better place. Thank you all. Dr. Calvin Hill, <laughs> Vice President, Springfield College. Thank you very much. The charge of the day. Thank you. And as we come to the close of our program, which Joshua will close us out in just a minute, I would like to give, you know, we threw these two young people some curveballs today. They improvised, they didn't, they didn't sweat, they just rolled with the program. Let's give them, stand up, you two, please stand up. You gotta see this nice suit. Yes. Oh my goodness, the these mayor wants this suit. <laughs> Look out into the crowd, accept your applause. They did an excellent, excellent job. Joshua job. and Malia, you Great may have job. a seat. Great job. And I, I would just like to reiterate what was mentioned earlier in the program about this being our village. Just take a look around. All around, all the faces, all the hues, all the creeds, all the religions, our friends, our families, our neighbors, our brothers and our sisters, this is our village. We are a village. I, I want to take this opportunity to recognize my village who's here with me today, my sister, my sister Wanda, my husband Desmond, and our son Trey. Thank you for being my village. And all, everyone who played any part in making today possible, getting a student a ride home from practice, making sure your students were fed and ready to go, 
the educators, the singers, the performers, the choir directors. You know you're a community when you have people directing choirs with a baby on their hip. And the baby I could see from here knew the words to the song. <laughs> So with that, I am going to turn the program over to Joshua, who will lead us in our closing event. Please stand and join in singing We Shall Overcome, led by Vanessa Ford and the Springfield Community Chorale, joined by students from CMS. Sonido Music, uh, MLK Family Services Youth, MLK Charter School of Excellent, Excellence Chorus. lift our voice together and say, we shall overcome. Give yourselves uh, an amazing round of applause. Chasing the dream, arriving together, standing in the light. Special thanks go out to the human service providers, New England Public Media, Springfield Cultural Council, the Massachusetts Cultural Council, MGM Mass Mutual Center, STCC, Westfield State University, 
Springfield College, the Basketball Hall of Fame, Community Foundation of Western Mass, Bay State Health, Westfield Bank, Mercy Medical Center, Hilltop Families, the Black Springfield COVID-19 Coalition, the Mass Coalition for Independent Work. Thanks to all of our sponsors. And as we leave with a very famous quote from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., it's always right to do right. We'll see you next year, everybody. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, someone left keys, car keys. We have car keys. Nissan, Nissan. If you're missing keys, we have them. Nissan, car keys.